In this lesson, I will explain to you measures of position and learning objectives are standard scores or Z scores, percentiles, deciles and quartiles. So in this lesson, I will explain to you about standard scores and Z scores, percentiles, deciles and quartiles we will discuss in the next lesson. So first of all, I will explain to you measures of position. They are used to locate the relative position of the data value in data set. Suppose you have a data set. Suppose we have numbers 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. And if you are taking or considering 20, so you have to find out the relative position of the 20 in that data set. In the next slide, I will show you the formula, how we can calculate and how we will use it. They are used to find the position of a value or you can say the same definition in this way that they are used to find the position of a value relative to other values in a set of observations or data. The most common measures of positions are percentiles, quartiles, deciles and standard scores or Z score. So in this lesson, I will explain to you standard scores. This is one of the most important measures of position. In the next lesson, we will discuss percentiles, quartiles, and deciles. So first is the standard score or Z score. A Z score is also known as the standard score. As it is, says here, you can see from here, standard score or Z score. So standard score and Z score both are same. Z score are expressed in terms of standard deviations from the mean. This is the most important thing that Z score are expressed in terms of standard deviations. Suppose this is our distribution. Bell shaped distribution is means it is symmetric distribution. This is mean. Suppose our mean is 50 and your number is suppose you are taking the exam of a chemistry and you have 75 marks out of 100 but the mean or average of the class is 50 so how we will measure this i am not going to say this that 25 percent more or 25 more marks we have to measure this in standard deviations i will say one standard deviation above mean or two standard deviation above mean and so on so z score we express in terms of standard deviations from the mean the z score tells how many standard deviations a data value is above or below the mean right so this is above below i will discuss in the next few slides if a z score is zero if means when we will solve the question there is a formula to calculate the Z score. If the Z score is zero, it means it is on the mean. It means that suppose if the mean is zero, so, so your marks are also zero. Sorry, 50. It means if the mean is 50, your number is also 50. If a Z score is equal to positive one, because Z score may be maybe it is positive or negative if it is positive one it means it is one standard deviation above the mean right so one comes here one two and three if the z score our answer will be positive two it is two standard deviation above the mean similarly three so three standard deviation above the mean in short, you can say Z scores are expressed in terms of standard deviation. It measures the deviations from the mean in terms of standard deviations. This is the formula for Z score. If suppose we are taking the samples or a population, sample Z, Z score equal to X minus X mean. This X bar represents mean of a sample and x is the roman letter as for standard deviation if we are considering sample then s represent the standard deviation in case of population mu the greek word represents the mean so it will be x minus mean mu and standard deviation represented 
by sigma in case of population. Population means you have to consider each and every object or in sample is the subset of the population. So the formula, general formula in order to calculate the z-score is value minus mean. Just like I told you, you have 7.5, sorry, 75% marks or 75 marks out of 100 is your value and mean of the class is 50, right? If the standard deviation is suppose 10, so 75 minus 50 divided, this will be 25 divided by 10, which will be equal to 2.5. So we will say that 2.5 standard deviations above the mean, this one. If it is one standard deviation, it means 68%, your data is spread in 68%. If this standard deviation is two, so data is spread 95%. If standard deviation is 3 so 99.7 percent right if this is a graph sorry this is the it should be a bell shaped bell shaped this is mean right this is one one standard deviation two standard deviation three standard deviation on the left side you have minus one minus two and minus three right so a z score or a standard score for a value is obtained by subtracting the mean from a value. This is mean from a value and divided by standard deviations. So here I have mentioned a question. Suppose Raj scored 85 in chemistry while the class average was 80. Means suppose one student has 40 number, other is 50, 60, 100, 90, but the average was 80 and Raj scored 85 with the standard deviation 5. Similarly, William scored 70 in his class, maybe in physics or maths, whatever, while the class average was 60 with the standard deviation 6, who scored better with respect to their class. So see, on the basis of this data, you cannot make any conclusions. 85, Raj scored 85 and average was 80 and he has 70 but the average was 60 what conclusions we will make right on the basis of this so here you have to use the z score x minus mu divided by sigma so this is x 85 value 85 minus mean this 80 this one and divided by whole this it means whole divided by 5 this is the standard deviation this is the sigma so it is 85 minus 85 over 5. So we can say one sigma or one standard deviation above mean because this is positive, right? If it is a bell-shaped curve like this and the mean of the class is 80, so Raj performance is here. He is one standard deviation above the mean. If we will see William, so write same thing, 70 minus 60 and this is whole divided by 6. So you will get 1.67. It means 1.67 standard deviation above mean. So in this case, the mean is 60. But William position is here. Here. So if you compare William and Raj, so William position is much better than Raj because Raj is one standard deviation above mean and he is 1.6 standard deviation above mean. So in Z score, we have to measure mean with respect to standard deviations. Another example is suppose 600 is the GMAT score and the standard deviation is 250. Find the standard score of a person who scores 750 so 750 this is the value and 600 is the mean divided by standard deviation which is 250 750 minus 600 150 divided by 2 so we will get 0 0.60 it means the score 750 is 0 0.60 standard deviation above the mean right again i will show you 
where mean lies mean lies is here in center and 600 right and 750 is the mark so it is 0.6 is here not even one so he didn't blow it out of the water right so his score we can say 750 is 0.60 standard deviation above the mean now one important thing regarding z score is that z score may also be positive or negative with a positive value indicating the score is above mean and negative score indicating it is below mean what does it mean suppose if mean lies here if it is your answer is positive we will go towards the right hand side we will say one or two or three standard deviation if it is negative then you have to move to the left side minus one minus two and so on in this case suppose average is 500 but your score is 400 so 400 minus 500 divided by 50 is the standard deviation we will get minus 100 or negative 100 divided by 50 which is equal to negative 2 it means your score is negative 2 standard deviation below mean mean is here right 500 is here but your performance is very bad it is minus 2 below mean right and this is the important thing you will get your answer in negative if your max will be always less than the mean see mean is 500 score is 400 then you will get your answer in negative and negative means below mean positive means above mean right so in z score you have learned that we measure from the mean in terms of standard deviation if it is positive 1 positive 2 positive 3 we can say plus 1 standard deviation above mean here we will say minus 1, minus 2 or whatever standard deviation below mean. Right? If still you have any question, you can write down in comment section and thanks for watching.